Assalamu alaikum dear students uh, welcome to Tin Film uh, Technology course uh, lecture number 3 uh, I'm Dr. Farwaz Ahmed and in this section we are uh, continue with the introductions of different terminologies and process and walls uh, and Tin Film technology uh, so in this particular lectures how uh, we will deal with the uh, merits and demerits of various uh, thin film deposition methods used for uh, sensor fabrications. I mean, uh, just like we mentioned in the previous lectures, uh, that is, we can utilize thin films for different applications uh, in different fields of modern technologies. And we also specify, uh, specify that there are different methods for the preparations of thin films. We discuss about uh, the sparkling techniques, uh, we discuss about uh, electron beam evaporations, uh, resistive evaporations, um, uh, activated reactor evaporations, and CVD techniques. I mean, these are all the process for the def uh, depositions of the thin films. So all these techniques, they have uh, merits and demerits uh, as long as we utilize them for the fabrications, uh, for the fabrications of the uh, thin film for uh, sensor uh, uh, application. I mean, uh, we want to have uh, the fabrication of a particular kind of sensors. So we can do it all by these techniques. So let's have a look that if we utilize a particular technique, so what should be the merit and demerits of that particular uh, technique. So let's start from the sputterings. I mean, we, we can utilize the sputtering techniques for the uh, sensor fabrication. So the advantages or merit of this technique is, I mean, it is a mostly used methods at low, uh, at low deposition temperatures, no force deposition heat treatment. Uh, uh, I mean, so no, no, for, uh, no force deposition heat treatment is required. Fine thickness controls and easy to do with uh, noble matters. I mean, these are the the merits or advantages when we utilize the sputtering technique for uh, sensor fabrications. So what are the demerits of sputtering techniques uh, when it's been utilized for sensor fabrications? So the demerits includes uh, it is difficult to accommodate multiple targets. I mean normally we have a single target inside the sputtering. So I mean the past demerit is that I mean difficult to accommodate different uh, I mean some multiple target at uh, a same place. Uh, NC2 uh, maskings not possible. Uh, complex operations. I mean these are the demerits of the sputterings uh, when we trying to utilize this for sensor fabrications, uh, uh, sensor pa uh, fabrications. So then we we can utilize electron beam operations. So this kind of the technique, it has a merit. I mean, it's often used uh, reasonably uniform over large areas, reasonable techniques controls, uh, and it is easy to accommodate multiple uh, boards. And situ masking is possible. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, its operation is very easy. And excelling to dove with the noble metals. I mean, these are the, the merit or advantages of <laughs> of electron beam evaporations. So the demerits of electron beam evaporation include uh, force deposition heat treatment as necessary. I mean this is one of the main uh, or the key demerits of the electron beam evaporation that uh, force deposition heat treatment as required. Few way to control uh, the quality of the film. I mean it's uh, uh, very few uh, I mean it's we have a very few ways to control the quality of the thin film. Similarly, we can utilize uh, the technique. I mean, it's, it's a type of the evaporation technique that is called resistive evaporations. Uh, it can also be utilized for sensor fabrications. Uh, and uh, again, it's very often used. Uh, and by utilizing this, we have reasonable uniformity uh, and depositions uh, of the sensor. Uh, I mean sensor fabrications, uh, so the uni uh, uniformity is possible in this particular technique. I mean we can uh, we can have a uniform depositions via this particular technique. So the demerit include uh, no thickness controls, difficult to dope with the noble metals, uh, forced deposition heat treatment is necessary. I mean it's without forced deposition heat treatment, I mean uh, the depositions are the fabrication is not possible with this uh, techniques. Uh, then we have another types 
of the evaporations that is called activated reactive evaporations. I mean, it's uh, scarcely used, uh, and I mean, it's a uh, uh, tachometric film at low temperatures, uh, reasonable uh, uniformity. I mean, uh, we have uh, the thelem uh, deposition, so that 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 uh, depositions, uh, it has reasonable uniformity. So, what's the demerits of these techniques? I mean, it's uh, operations of this particular technique is uh, complex. And it, ha it has been very difficult to doff with the noble uh, metals uh, and in situ maskings difficult, uh, in situ masking is difficult, no techniques control. I mean, these are the demerits of these particular techniques. Then we have chemical vapor deposition technique that in short we call CVD. Uh, it is cheap and easy uh, technique to, uh, I mean, it's very easy, uh, very cheap technique. And a sample technique, easy to utilize technique. And in this particular technique, when, you, when we utilize for uh, sensor publications, I mean, uh, in this technique, no force deposition heat treatment is uh, required. I mean, so these are the, I mean, uh, uh, some of the, uh, I mean, uh, excellent merits, or you can say that, advantages of the CVD technique. That is, uh, I mean, it's, it is a very cheap techniques. I mean, it is very easy to handle this technique. And uh, uh, no force deposition heat treatment is required in this technique. That is why this technique is most widely used for uh, sensor fabrications. Um, but it also has uh, some demerits. That is, uh, no thickness controls for uh, uniformity and uh, difficult to dope metals. Uh, and along with that, no in situ masking. So these are all the techniques. It's been utilized for the sensor fabrication and all these techniques they have their merits and demerits. I mean there is not 100% uh, I mean uh, uh, accurate or 100% precise technique which we can say that it should have only merits and uh, shouldn't have any demerits. So all the techniques they have their merits and uh, demerits. So the question is why sometimes in sensor fabrication we utilize uh, I mean uh, different techniques uh, I mean, uh, sometimes uh, we utilize two or more techniques. Uh, that's why to overcome the disadvantages of one technique with the advantages of the uh, next technique. So once we have thin film, uh, then uh, we utilize different uh, characterizations technique to have an overview uh, of what we have synthesized. I mean, we have to check the properties. We have to check the structures. Uh, the structures and the properties of the thin film. I mean, so what do we want to know? When, when, when we have a thin film, uh, I mean, we fabricate or we synthesize a thin film. So what do we want to know? And how do we, how do we find this out? I mean, these are the questions. We, uh, we apply a technique just like we mentioned on the previous slide. I mean, whether it's CVD or it's PVD, I mean, it's just a chemical vapor deposition or uh, physical vapor deposition technique, we deposit a thin film. So then what do we want to know and how do we want, uh, how do we find out this? So these are the questions. So uh, what actually uh, do we want to know? We want to know what does the sample look like? I mean, these are the questions. First of all, when we synthesize a thin film, uh, so we have a question in mind that is, what does the sample look like? This is the first question we have. So on a microscopic scale, on a microscopic scale, on an atomic scale, I mean these are the scale. These are the different scales and we have the questions. What does the sample look like on a microscopic scale, on, I mean this sorry, the macroscopic uh, scale, on a microscopic scale, on an atomic scale. So how do we find this out? So these are the questions. That is, we utilize optical microscopy. I mean, to visualize the thin film at a macro scale. I mean, at a macro scale, whenever we're trying to visualize or to have a look at the synthesized thin film at the macro scale, so we utilize optical microscopy. So on a micro scale, our microscopic scale, we utilize a scanning electron microscopy that in short we have uh, SCM 
uh, SEM short for scanning electron microscopy and we have not maybe more advanced technique that we call uh, field emission scanning electron microscopy or we can say <coughs> variable pressure scanning electron microscopy. Similarly on atomic scale or uh, microscopic scale so we have the devices uh, that we call transmission electron microscopy I mean it's also a device I mean uh, with the help of which we can look at a microscopic scales uh, and uh, we can have devices just like scanning probe microscopy or atomic force microscopy with the help of which we can uh, look at the sample on the atomic scale I mean uh, we have STEM STM and AFM that we call uh, standing uh, scanning from microscopy of atomic force microscopy these devices are apparatus that are being utilized to look at a sample on an atomic uh, scales then again uh, we have further questions that is uh, we want to know what is the structure of the sample I mean uh, uh, I mean after being uh, have, after having the information how does the sample look like after that we have the question in mind what is the structure of the sample? I mean, uh, by the structure of the sample, we mean that interlayer structures, density, and microscopic and atomic scale. So, in order to answer this question, that is interlayer structures, density, and microscopic and atomic scale. So, for this, we utilize the X ray diffraction technique, that in short, we call uh, XRD. We can utilize stylus uh, profilometry. We can utilize quartz uh, crystals uh, monitors that we call QCMs. We can utilize ellipsometry. Uh, we can utilize low energy electron diffractions that we call LED, that simply is also called LED. Uh, we can utilize reflection high energy electron uh, diffraction, which in short is called RHEED. Uh, so these are the techniques that are being utilized uh, to answer the, the, the questions that, that the queries that what is the structure of the sample. So the structure of the sample uh, can be discovered, can be studied with the help of uh, all these uh, techniques. Then again, we have another question about the sample. I mean, the thin film which we have synthesized that uh, what is the sample matter? I mean, what is the elemental compositions, impurities or chemical states I mean this is question number third uh, which we ask from ourselves that what is the sample matter that is what is the elemental compositions or impurities found in the sample or chemical state so these are the techniques that is we utilize uh, electron uh, outer electron spectroscopy uh, that in short we call is IES similarly we can utilize uh, electron uh, sorry, uh, energy dispersive analysis of X-rays that we call EDX. Similarly, we can utilize X-ray portal electron spectroscopy to find out the elemental compositions and purities or chemical states. Uh, we can utilize a secondary ion mass spectroscopy, it's called SAMS. Uh, we can utilize Rutherford uh, backscattering, that is RBS. And these all techniques that have been utilized uh, to answer the question what's the sample matter that is for finding out the elemental compositions impurities and chemical states of the uh, thin film that we have deposited then we again we have another question in mind that what are the optical properties of the sample I mean if you are interesting to find out the optical properties of the sample uh, I mean those prop uh, optical properties might be refractive index absorptions dielectric properties uh, as a function of how well in so for to answer this question to find out these properties for this we do the ellipsometry of the uh, synthesized uh, sample then uh, we have another question in mind what are the electrical properties of the sample I mean you synthesize the sample you deposit it in film so you ask yourselves so what are the electrical properties of the sample by electrical properties we mean device properties and not covered here so uh, we study about the material properties that is resistance or conductance or capacitance. I mean uh, we synthesize the materials or deposit a particular material in the form of thin films. So we want to know about the resistance, conductance or the capacitance. 
So for that, uh, we utilize uh, resist for resistance. We utilize uh, four point fob. I mean, four point fob uh, is a technique for finding of the resistance or the conductance, and we can utilize it for. Uh, I mean, uh, for the capacitance, I mean, is, 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 uh, it can be utilized for that particular purpose as well. So another question is, uh, what are the magnetic properties of the sample that is hysteresis loop? So for that, we utilize magneto-optical care effect, that is a short we call MOK, M-O-K, and we can utilize uh, ferromagnetic uh, resonance. And we have also uh, some other techniques uh, that is uh, we call a VSM, vibrating sample magnetometers, which is not listed here. I mean, that can also be utilized for finding out the magnetic properties of the sample. The last but not the least uh, means uh, we have a question in mind what are the mechanical properties of the sample? That is, internal stresses in the film, substrates, uh, substrates, fractions, addition. So uh, for that we utilize stress curve, uh, stress curvature measurement, fin on the desk of fraction test, and addition test. I mean these are the tests we normally utilize for uh, finding out uh, the, the answer for this question that why, uh, what are the uh, mechanical uh, properties of the sample. So this is all uh, we have for this lecture. Thank you for watching. Uh, see you in next lecture with further details about thin film. Till then, bye bye.